Stephen Gift has been a campus planner for more than 30 years, working on dozens of campuses, first at Virginia Tech and the University of South Florida, and later in private practice. This conversation concerns his work at USF and observations about campus planning and the future of campuses. This um, space that is kind of a, a, a concept of um, Eastern and um, Northeastern universities, maybe even English universities, was being in that setting. So walking um, 100 or 200 yards across a very large open space is perhaps a different experience in that climate. Um, so i never forget they had a, um, a bust of Martin Luther King out in the middle of this space that was named the MLK Plaza, and um, the bust stood on a brick pylon um, in the middle of this very um, desolate and um, um, un unfriendly space. And, um, you know, nobody wanted to be there. There were no benches. There was no shade. Um, you know, it was to kind of a, a space you would transit through and, you know, nod your head at this monument. Um, and we had the opportunity, um, as I arrived, um, to kind of reconceive that. And I, in fact, the project was already underway with some local landscape architects. And um, it, it just wasn't um, kind of realizing the potential and the need for that space. So the um, campus had just gone through a planning exercise with Sasaki. Um, and Perry Chapman and Joe Hibbard, um, a couple of my heroes in the profession. Um, I, I asked them, that, well, first I flew to Cambridge, um, to Waterton, and took the design of the plaza as it stood when I met it, and I showed it to them, and I said, does this in any way represent the potential of the master plan? And of course, um, we decided it didn't, and then I convinced the administration to kind of abandon the direction they were in, and to kind of rethink it, and I brought in, um, the Sasaki folks. And there was also a new bookstore being developed, a parking garage, some um, student center work, um, and I was able to um, bring all the parties for all those projects which were closely um, geographically connected, and um, we did several charrettes, we brought students in, and you know, first unwinding the first project and then kind of winding it back into it, um, the long and the short of it was we created a kind of oasis um, that bridged from the student center to the administration building across this um, barren, um, expansive lawn. Um, we took the bus down and we made it a um, three-quarter um, body um, statue. And the whole um, space was conceived around the metaphors and, and life of um, Dr. King. Um, and um, it, it was a wonderful, um, ex expression of um, the garden that was possible in that part of the world. It gave shade, it gave respite, there was a reflecting pool. We draw lines of granite out to various places in the world where MLK's life unfolded. Um, and the project, at, you know, like a two million dollar expenditure, um, completely transformed the way the university felt about itself. I n I've never kind of experience the power of place in as clear and exacting terms. That, you know, taking um, something that had so little potential um, in, the, in its current expression and then turning it into something that really became signature to the campus, to the place, to the region, um, to the mission of the university, to the idea of diversity and the heroes of our culture was just a, a kind of transformational moment for the university. Um, and that was, that was incredibly powerful. Um, I think not just to me, but um, certainly to the whole kind of idea of what the campus could become. And then that kicked off a 10-year run of implementing the master plan. A well-done master plan um, is an implementing document of strategic thinking, whether it's a strategic plan or some more generalized vision plan. Right. So my conversations with leadership at universities generally begin with, uh, where are we going? Um, what is the trajectory of this university and, and um, what needs to happen that hasn't yet happened and why? And then um, how do we take these um, physical and environmental assets and orchestrate them such that they can um, begin to help, you know, create that momentum? So, um, you know, I think the conversations always begin with um, where are you going and why? 
and then how does the university see its assets? Um, you know, and, and the universities generally, I think, do a really good job with their human resources, their intellectual capital, mm -hmm. and also financial capital by and large. Um, but um, frequently, they're not as adroit with their um, physical capital, if you will, and their environmental capital. And I think that's changing, particularly on the environmental side. I think universities mm -hmm. are becoming leaders in sustainability and, and kind of thinking about the long-range viability of our spaceship. Um, but, you know, I, I, they haven't always seen the physical realm as being a particularly powerful asset. So I think, you know, I try to um, help them perceive it that way and to, you know, actively manage um, that asset in a, way, in a way they would their intellectual capital, for instance. I mean, one of the um, kind of quotes you hear most often in this business is that students make their choice of institution in the, the first few minutes hmm. that they experience the physical place. I mean, right. that speaks to the power of place and how a young mind, at least, is processing, you know, how am I going to spend the next four or five years of my life? One has to move beyond uh, the kind of immediate midterm or close term. And, and think about um, what it's going to take for people to be successful in a future where technology changes on a three-year cycle um, and reinvents itself. But, I mean, the, the value of um, learning and um, achievement in a culture that is increasingly um, driven by change, um, I think, is only going to heighten the need for education. I think there are powerful new tools in play that we're still trying to figure out how to integrate. I mean, certainly the internet has changed all of our lives, all of our work lives. Um, and, you know, other technological um, revolutions are coming along with biological revolutions and, those, and the like. But I think it's going to take um, extremely well-trained and um, um, well-motivated um, people, people that kind of understand new in the context of what has transpired before to kind of put all of that in its proper value and, and category. So, you know, I don't see anything more than um, greater challenges and greater opportunities for higher education to contribute in the future. But I do think the pace of change and the ability of higher education to transform itself needs to really gear up. Um, and I think, um, you know, the value of an institution is to stay rooted in the past, to have some connection to what has been. Um, but I think we've got to, as institutions and as people who plan for institutions, we've really got to adopt a, a mentality of experimentation and change. And we've got to see that as the mandate for the future because things are changing all around us. And the one thing that we can't be is um, irrelevant to that change. Stephen Gift is a principal in the campus planning group and an affiliate member of the Association of University Architects. This conversation was recorded June 22, 2015 in Chapel Hill, North Carolina.